training. Hello, and welcome to your training with Spock. This video contains two tests on one of the biggest components of building chords, namely the perfect intervals. If you will recall, when we play the major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and Do, and we play it against the tonic, which is the first note of the scale, we get a progression of intervals which goes perfect unison, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, perfect octave. Now notice that four of these intervals are what we call major, and they're signified with a capital M, and the other four are what we call perfect, and they are signified with a capital P. There is a great difference between these intervals. For one thing, the major intervals have ma minor counterparts, like the minor third, and the minor sixth, the minor seventh. One of the biggest differences between perfect intervals and major and minor intervals is that the major and minor intervals have personalities, which are described as happy, sad, and various degrees of tense, sort of tense, very tense. And the perfect intervals do not. They have, in, they have adjectives to describe them such as open and smooth and strong. There are three main methods that people use to recognize the different intervals. Number one is to listen to the sheer dissonance of the interval. For example, the minor second has a very unique dissonance, as does the perfect octave. Number two is to count the number of scale steps between the two intervals. Uh, for example, with the perfect fourth, we listen to the two notes, and you identify the bottom note, duh, and the top note, duh, and then you sing the amount of scale steps, one, two, three, four, to get to the top note. With the perfect fifth, it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. That doesn't tell you if it's a major or a minor six, but then one of the other methods would let you hone into those. The third method is to memorize a list of tunes that use that interval prominently, and then when you hear the interval, you sing the song, you recognize which song it fits to, and then you go through your list and you go, oh, okay. For example, the uh, perfect fourth. Amazing grace. And for the perfect fifth. Theme to Star Wars, da, 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 da. Um, and so every interval in the scale, you'd memorize a different tune that goes along with that particular interval. This particular test is going to be looking at the fourth and the fifth, and like I said, they are inversions of each other. What an inversion is is when you have two notes played at the same time. One will be the lower note, and the other one is the higher note. Let's say this is a C and this is an F. The inversion of that interval is when the C is transposed up an octave and the F is now below the C. It's still the same two notes. C on the bottom, F on top. F on the bottom and C on top. Those two intervals have a very similar dissonance level. So that's why when you hear two at the same time, you have to think, oh, okay. That's why I count scale steps to tell the difference between fourths and fifths when they're played the same. When you hear them melodically, it's a little easier because then you can recognize the tune that it belongs to. But when they're played at the same time, it might be a little more difficult. As always, these tests work on two levels, one for the basic student and one for the most more advanced student. For the basic student, you're just going to want to tell the difference between the various intervals. The perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, which are both smooth um, and don't have a lot of dissonance. And the perfect octave, which has very little emotional flavor at all. For the second test, we're going to also add the tritone, which is the interval just between the fourth first test will just be the perfect intervals, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and the octave. And the second test will throw in the tritone as well.
For the more advanced students, each interval is going to share a note in common or move in step to the next interval. And the first interval will start off with the note C and another note. And then from there, you, your task is to figure out not only what type of interval it is, but exactly what notes are being played. The test will begin with a C chromatic scale for you to get your harmonic bearings. Good luck. Test number one. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect octave. The C chromatic scale. Perfect fifth on C and G. Perfect fourth on C and F. Perfect fifth on C sharp and G sharp, or D flat and A flat. Perfect octave on D. Perfect fifth on E flat and B flat, or D sharp and A sharp. Perfect fourth on E and A. Perfect fifth on F and C. Perfect fourth on F sharp and B. Perfect octave on the note B flat. Perfect fifth, B flat and F. Perfect fourth on F and B flat. Perfect fifth on E and B. Perfect fifth on E flat and B flat, or D sharp and A sharp. Perfect octave on F.
perfect fourth on G and C. Perfect fourth on C and F. Perfect fourth on E and A. Perfect fifth on E flat and B flat, or D sharp and A sharp. Perfect fourth on D and G. Perfect fifth on D flat and A flat. End of test one. Test number two. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect octave, and tritone. The C chromatic scale. Perfect fourth on C and F. Perfect fifth on F and C. Perfect octave on D. Perfect fifth on E flat and B flat, or D sharp and A sharp. Perfect fourth on E and A. Tritone on D and G sharp or A flat. Perfect octave on C sharp or D flat. Perfect fifth on C and G. Perfect fourth, E flat and A flat. Perfect fourth, B flat and E flat. Perfect fifth, B and F sharp.
tritone, C and F sharp. Perfect fifth, D and A. Perfect fourth, A and D. Perfect fifth, F and C. Tritone, E and A sharp, or B flat. Perfect fourth, F sharp and B. Perfect fourth, C sharp and F sharp. Perfect fifth, C and G. Perfect fourth on C and F. End of test two.